Hello there guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Matt and today I'm going to be showing you how to make some floating concrete shelves. So keep watching for some more concrete content. So you can see here I've got the four shelf moulds and they all have a lip on the front of them to cover up the battens that they'll be sitting on so they all look like they're floating shelves. And first of all I cut out all of the bases of the shelves and uh, just to make sure that the length and the width was the exact size I needed and then stuck on everything else afterwards. So to work out the sizing for the side pieces, you need to decide on the thickness of the concrete that you're gonna use. So in this case, it's 25 millimeters. So at the front lip edge, for example, we're gonna be adding on 18 millimeters for the base melamine board. Then we're gonna have 25 mil for the thickness of the concrete, and then an additional 40 mil for the drop of the lip that we have there. So it's a total height of 83 millimeters that's gonna be stuck onto the front lip edge. And then on the opposite side, we have 18 millimeters for the base melamine board and then an additional 25 millimeters for the thickness of the concrete, which is a total of 43 millimeters. So you stick that onto that opposite side. And then along the side pieces, we have these L-shaped um, pieces. So the, the thickest part of the L is 83 mil, just like I said before. And then the, the lowest part of the L is 43 mil. But the, the amount that it comes out by from the front lip edge is 43 mil again, because it's you need that 25 millimeters thickness for that, that front lip edge. And then we have a piece of shuttering that goes across uh, between those two points that you can see there. And that's 40 millimeters exactly, because that's the drop of the front lip edge. Then once you've cut all of those pieces, put a strip of sellotape or smooth tape on the base edge of the shuttering that you've got there, just to cover up that sawn fibrous edge that you have that's gonna be in contact with the concrete, just to make it easier to demold properly. And then screw all of the pieces together um, using a pilot drill bit to pre-drill the holes um, that's slightly smaller but a very similar size to the actual screw thickness that you're using because um, MDF melamine board can split easily if you um, screw along its actual length. Once you've got that all screwed together, just get some neutral cure silicon and a mastic gun and gunk it all out on the internal edges and just wipe it with your finger to create a nice smooth radius. I like to use some masking tape to mark these out first and then peel them away afterwards to create some nice clean lines but these will become the external edges of your new uh, shelving. So the internal edges will become the external edges. Then you wanna let the silicon cure off overnight because it's neutral cure silicon. It takes a little bit longer than standard acetoxy silicon that you'd use in your bathroom or your kitchen. And then just clean off the surface with some window cleaner and a, a tissue or a rag. And then we're using cooking oil here as a mold release. You just wanna apply it as thinly as possible to the surface and dry off as much as possible. You just wanna have a slippery surface, but with no pooling of uh, oil in there at all. Just want to, you don't wanna contaminate the concrete while it's curing. So for this shelving, we're mixing in 4% pigment to the concrete and then mixing that in the mixer dry to make sure it's evenly distributed. To see how that's been calculated and all the other products and tools used in this video, you can see the links in the description and the description of the calculation below. And then we're adding in mortar plaster sizes to make sure that the concrete is as workable as possible and then some water. And we're gonna try and create a really nice wet mix, but not so much water that it's pooling on the top of the concrete mix after we start vibrating it. So you want it to be wet enough so that it fills all of the surface once it's been vibrated. Uh, because if you do it too dry, you'll end up with lots of porous little holes on the surface once it's all finished. Then what you can see here is a vibrating table made from an old car tire and a piece of old melamine board um, and a vibrating motor that's mounted on the underside of it. Um, and this is actually a really good way of making a good value vibrating table without spending thousands of pounds on a metal like professional welded one. Uh, and it works really well. All the bubbles vibrate to the top, you get a really consistent piece of concrete uh, and it's good for, for DIY applications. Um, but it was a little bit difficult to find the motor. So I put a link in the description for it. It was around 40 or 50 pounds and we bought it from Czech Republic, um, but it works really well for this application. And if you're not planning to do this professionally, then it's a really good solution for DIY projects. So basically I just filled the base of all of the molds with concrete up to the 25 millimeter mark, and then I vibrated them for about three to five minutes and then put each of them onto a leveled pallet and filled the lip of the mold with more concrete and patted that down to try and get rid of as many air bubbles as possible. And I left it slightly raised above the surface because that will be ground back flat um, once it's all cured and concrete does shrink as it cures. So you don't want it to be lower than you want it to be. 
So I've left the concrete to cure for about two to three days. So it's gone completely solid now. And I'm going to use a machine polisher with a polishing pad, which is 40 grit, because concrete is very hard to grind. Uh, I'm just gonna polish the edges first so that the concrete is level up against the wood. And then I'm gonna grind across the middle to flatten it out, uh, make it completely smooth, and then go across the lip at the top and just flatten that all out. So first of all here, I'm going to take off the 40 millimeter piece of shuttering that we use to make that lip. And then I'm gonna grind back the unevenness between that and the base of the shelf um, to make it completely flat. Then I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of the screws from each of the molds and use a chisel to carefully pry apart the molds and you'll see the fully molded shelves. Once all of the shelves have been demolded, all you really need to do now is polish them with some 1200 grit wet and dry paper and a bucket of water just to keep the surface lubricated and just leave them to dry for about three to four hours before applying any sealer. So I'm using H-Seal Concrete Countertop Sealer for these shelves because it's matte finish, it's food safe and it's waterproof so you can't really go wrong and it gives a really nice consistent sheen once it's all cured. If you'd like to give it a go for yourself, then you can click on the link in the description to see where I got it from. And now you can see the final results before and after. And I really like the way the new shelves cover up the battens so they look like they're floating and they give a really nice industrial look. If you found this video helpful or interesting in any way, please do consider subscribing and liking this video because it will help more people see it. And I've got far more concrete content coming for you in the future. So stay tuned and thank you so much for watching. See you guys soon.